Gang, this POV is stacked with gold when it comes to working the scene, which is also known as fishing. And I wish that I'd seen something like this earlier in my journey, as it's invaluable to hear how a photographer that I might have looked up to would have approached a completely new scene. And more importantly, what we can learn from them and understand how they think so that can help our own work. And whether that's exposing us to new ideas that we may not have even been aware of, or getting a better understanding of the thought process behind the iteration and the experimentation to try and improve our images. And within this video, you will see all of that. Plus how I find new subjects, keep things fresh, keep things interesting, as well as the progression from the original idea to its final product and the images that I'm most happy with. And essentially it's an in the moment guide of how I approach fishing a scene. And from reading many of your comments is an area that a lot of you are very interested in. So enjoy. <laughs> So over here, we're getting a lot of atmosphere. Oh, I'm perfect, we've got some some budding volunteers up here. Are you gonna cross? Anyway, there's a, a lot of atmosphere over here in the distance. There's a lot of visual language consistency between the shard and then the rest of the um, structure. Oh, go on. Oh, look at this timing. Go on, big breath. Big breath or some gestures. Oh, you guys got in the perfect spot. Yeah. Is you better this way? Is that cool? I don't know whether that's cool. Nah, wash it out too much. I think the silhouettes look best. So when they're breathing, let's move with them a little bit. Oh, bird, nice. Nice. So when they were breathing out, it was creating a beautiful separation between the two subjects because the light was hitting it and the breath was between them so the boat's just pulled up now so we're going to hope that more people are going to come up here so we can repeat that in an ideal world we get people in each of these different little sections and so we know that people are about to get off the boat so let's frame it up in the way that we think is the most interesting i think to be fair around here it was pretty nice Maybe if we get a tiny bit lower, we should be able to get, should be able to use this as a bit of a foreground element to start creating depth. So it doesn't seem like it's just a photo of that. We are able to create layers within our frame. And so this is how stacking different photography concepts really starts to make our images feel a lot more immersive, makes the images feel a lot more Interesting, there's a lot more going on. There's a lot more things for us or for the viewer to start looking at. So this is really cool. So we've got the sun over there, but we've also got second suns over here. And then why is that interesting? It means that in spots like this, because we've got sun hitting us and the skyscrapers hitting us, we've then got interesting light here. And so, if you look at my Fuji, see how it's lit up against the background? Because the light is different and unnatural, it makes the subject stand out against the background and against the environment. And that unnatural light helps separate the subject, helps make the subject look different, helps them stand out. And yeah, we can make boring subjects interesting, interesting subjects boring. Like, look, look at my face. How weird does that look compared to the background over here? Use that to your advantage. Look at that light effect. That is so cool. The sun's obviously coming across here, hitting that and bouncing back. There's probably some atmosphere there. Obviously there's gonna be atmosphere, but like clouds or something that's making that create lines in the sky, which I think looks absolutely beautiful. Oh, these birds are cool. Let's move out, give them more space. Wow, they look almost like bats. Oh, that's really cool. Would never have noticed that if I hadn't hung around and was taking videos. Oh, more birds. Let's go, go on. 
gang and although the photo isn't particularly nice there's nothing really going on there's no real story that's interesting and that's cool and that's such an underrated benefit of photography is how it forces you to go out and just experience things and although the photo isn't great i have experienced something that is cool that is unique that a lot of people wandering around don't even realize and i'm discovering beauty just wandering around which feels like a life hack i don't, I don't know how more people don't <laughs> don't do this this is 10 out of 10 i love it not sure if you can tell it is minging cold in the sunshine over there it's beautiful but this side the south bank this ain't it <laughs> right i'm gonna go dry run get some coffee this is always the weirdest artwork in london Boda Bear and Dog Man wanted everyone to stay cool. Something that I guess a lot of YouTubers uh, don't give consideration of and a lot of viewers don't really understand is so much of being out shooting on the street results in nada. <laughs> you try something and it doesn't work or you wait around for the perfect subject and it never comes and so much of your time is spent wasted. But that's the time where you're learning. That's the time where you're thinking about photography and composition and story and you're really able to develop your ideas as a creative. And by doing that, the more you do that, obviously the more opportunity there is that you're actually gonna take good photos. But you're also gonna be putting yourself in the right scenarios. So when the moment does come, then you are ready to smash it. That having been said, I'd quite like to get a nice photo because I don't think I've done that. <laughs> I don't think I've done that today. Still waiting for that moment. We are hunting. We will get it. We've got feeling. We've got a good feeling. In the scene, we've got this royal and that. You see this. Show a reflection on the stairs. So I want to create a really flat frame so it feels very real and just have someone either coming down or up. Do something interesting in the mirror. That's the goal, that's the vision. Proving harder to do than initially thought. Want someone to go downstairs on the rail of the far side looking at the camera. I think that would make the photo much better. His feet is not alright, faces are better. I wish I was recording, but. <laughs> Dang, I think we got it. That was working the scene for 25 minutes. Try my best. Nothing was happening. The things weren't happening in the way that I wanted to, but because I was there, ready, waiting, admittedly in that moment, I was playing my settings. Something happened that was a weird experience, which, <laughs> Made the photo. It's just a testament to like, just be ready. The more time you're out, the more time you're gonna get the photo. So, <laughs> I'm gas. I think that that photo. <laughs> is it a four? It's definitely, it's definitely, definitely a three. Is it a four though? What do you think? Let me know. So, see that? This is a very Alex Webb inspired. Uh, frame that was actually a perfect example because obviously we've got these highlights and then the shadows and then that little uh, highlight here depending on how far or how close people are to this wall or away from the wall it depends whether they are either in the light uh, against the shadow or they're in the light in the light and at the moment i'm still not sure which one i prefer so i'm just kind of hanging around waiting to see whether i prefer it in or out Back out again, currently wandering around Bank. Um, my goal is to try and get some cold looking office workers getting absolutely blasted by some beautiful sunshine. But hopefully we'll get kind of like sad looking people around, um, followed by someone that is really enjoying being in the sun. And that's a nice story to tell. I cannot stress how valuable this next section is. And although it's a little longer, I promise you 
it is worth it. Gang, look at this. If we can get higher, maybe we can get some separation between our subjects and the background. The light is looking nice over here. So you kind of want to get this in the frame, but I'm not sure whether the 35 is going to be wide enough or interesting enough. Uh, I don't really know. Let's <laughs> really blast it up. I want all of this to be empty just to get all those people. Maybe I'm going to hop across to there to get much more detail. So they need to get from all these bikes. Oh, maybe there's a bus or something that comes past. Try to get all of these. If we can get a bus coming down this way, filling in this gap here, I can get the repeating lines up there. But I'll be looking like that, so it's gonna happen. Actually, these people here are being lit by some sort of light coming back. Patch of light is like here. I don't know where's it coming from. Oh, let's get some people walking. Stilling out a little bit. Ah, oh, it's here. Let's get this guy. Uh, back no. Alright, so we've got the sun over here. We've got light coming back this way. So in this sort of patch here, people's faces are being illuminated from front as well as the back so we're gonna hopefully be able to make them stand out against the background so we crouch down to be able to get them silhouetted against the sky up more yeah this looks looking nice we just want interesting people coming in front of us now go on let's get this eye contact yeah As the sun is coming around this way, this reflection is gradually moving further up, so we have to continuously keep it tracking forwards. Because when it's blinding you, you know it's about here. So a couple steps back. Bend down. Now let's hope for the best. Oh, that is perfectly warm. Nice. We've now got that patch of light and the sun is illuminating this spot here. So if you look at people's faces as it gets around here, you'll see that they, they light up. So we're going to wait for hopefully someone interesting. Probably just be ready, practicing, full in focus, working it. I like those glasses. What are we looking for? Looking for someone who maybe sticks out. Maybe someone that's got a particular superstar personality. Someone that's just doing a lot of different from all. With gloves, struggling to hit the shut button. <laughs> that's it. Alright, we've got cool red trousers. Yeah, they look pretty sick. Yellow, yellow. Red jacket, that's cool. 
kind of want someone coming towards us though. Because <laughs> that is going to so the faces are being lit here. Maybe we need to go slightly closer. Maybe about here. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five. So if we get someone here, that can be interesting. That feels nice. Having that big ball of fire warm you up a little bit. In this scene, we've got this building, which is a big reflector, casting these beautiful light strips here. So you see when this guy walks past, he creates a nice shadow. If we can get someone wearing light clothes in that patch, they're gonna really stand out against this dark background. If you look at the camera here, we want someone in but there. Ideally coming, ideally coming towards us as well, because then they take up a lot more of the frame. We can also use these strips of light as leading lights, bring us towards the building, spreading the nice light, brings this background to our subject. I'm not sure whether we're going to get it, gang. this guy. Look at that. Move closer, is it going to do anything? Maybe if we wait till he's over here, create more of a silhouette. I'm sure that's boring though. It's just, just a silhouette. It's not really making the most of the lines and everything going on. But it is absolutely freezing. So, <laughs> so I'm going to wait here for maybe five minutes? Four minutes, three, three. I need 30 seconds because it's really, really cold. I think a lot of street photographers are going to disagree with me on this, but I think that when we're out and about shooting, we should be eating healthy, nutritious food to fuel our brains. And so, what, why do I say that? Going for beers and burgers and eating biscuits and stuff as you're wandering around tastes great and you have a great time, but it doesn't help you think clearly. And everyone's goal when they go out and shoot is different. A lot of people go out just to have fun. But my goal is to go out and get better, to take the best photos that I can and to continuously push myself. And in order to, and in order to do that, I need to have my brain working as sharp as it possibly can. And so I tend to think that if that's your goal to, be a good photographer and to continuously improve at the craft, fuel your brain with the right stuff because you don't want to get sluggish. You want your brain to be firing all cylinders. And I think it's such a missed opportunity to not get food that serves your greater goals, but I also think you can get some pretty, pretty nice food that tastes good, fuels brain. I'm gonna go get some steak 